Hello friends, welcome to part 4 in my series on Takarians and their DNA results. So Takarians, these samples are all from Iron Age Xinjiang in China, uh, right here in northwestern China right now. Uh, right now, Turkic people live here. Right now, it's mostly Uyghur, Uyghurs and various kinds of Mongols who live there. Uh, and the Chinese government is uh, really, um, really oppressing them really badly. They put them in concentration camps. Nasty stuff. But... Uh, these Takarians were actually not Turkic or Mongolic. They were Indo-European people. They spoke a language branch that is extinct. There is no, um, the, the, there's, there is no um, languages that exist today that would resemble their tongue. And, of course, other Indo-European languages, such as like Iranian or Russian, there is some resemblance to Takarians and what they, what they spoke. But... Really, the resemblance, the resemblance is rather weak because um, Russian is not any closer to Takarian than it is to Iranian. And Russian and Iranian and Farsi, they are not really mutually comprehensible, right? So this is an Indo-European language, but it is a branch of Indo-European languages that is completely extinct. And let's go ahead and explore what uh, this individual scores with my trade predictor and GED match and whatever else. So for the haplogroup, it looks like his Y DNA is actually R1B. He's got haplogroup R1B, very Western European haplogroup to have, um, and a very Takarian haplogroup to have as well, because uh, it's it's through Afanasyevo descent that he got this haplogroup. His mitochondrial lineage, it looks like, is let's see, it's H2A1. H2A1 is his uh, mitochondrial lineage. All right, and now let's check his ethnic calculator results. We're gonna start with uh, the uh, trade predictor first, and we're going to move on to GED match. So with the trade predictor first, he is closest to Hispanic people, followed by Turkish, followed by this Israelite individual, which is kind of an outlier sample, actually, followed by Sarmatians from the Urals. Okay. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Batai hunter-gatherer plus Azerbaijani. Well, it's a kind of, kind of um, deranged modeling, actually. Kind of a deranged modeling. There's Iranian individual plus Malta boy, MA1. Um, there's Pinar Basi Hunter Gatherer plus MA1, very interesting, uh, very Caucasus kind of result, uh, in my opinion. There's Karakaba Turkic plus Funnel Beaker, very interesting. Uh, there's Kimerian from Ukraine plus Livonian from Estonia. There's Punjabi Jat plus Livonian. So it's kind of all over the place, and it's difficult to get a good picture of uh, with my trade predictor ethnicity calculator. It's difficult to get a good picture of what ethnicity this individual is actually resembling. So we're going to move on to GED match, and we're going to show you MDLPK11 here. So with the MDLPK11 here, we see something very interesting. We see that he's scoring 36% Caucasus, uh, very Caucasus, um, very Caucasus category. It's labeled as EHG, but it's really not. It's so not EHG. It's it's Caucasus specific drift. So he's got 36% and a half Caucasus specific drift. When it comes to actual EHG, it looks like he's got 31% of actual EHG, which is mislabeled as WHG. Uh, really, this category is capturing WHG plus Eastern Hunter Gatherer uh, specific drift. So it looks like it's kind of a very Yamne or Proto Indo European like result. You don't see any Neolithic here, so there is no there is no Neolithic farmer admixture, uh, and you do see some exotic stuff like nine percent Amerindian and ten percent Siberian. This is kind of the admixture when when these Afanasyevo people went into uh, Xinjiang, they mixed with some of the natives who lived there. So that's why this individual is not a 100% of Anasibo. This individual, as you can see with the oracle here, is more like 63% of Anasibo plus 36% Akunyovo Bronze Age. It's, it's kind of a bad model because in this calculator's oracle, uh, there is only a reference to stuff like Akunyovo. There is no reference for uh, Tarim in Neolithic, right? That doesn't exist here. <laughs> but if it did, if it did, you could replace the Akunyovo with Tarim in Neolithic or West Siberian hunter-gatherer, or any other uh, placeholder. In this case, it's Akunyova. So as you can see, it's a mixture of Afanasis for Neolithic plus Akunyovo, or Yamne plus Akunyovo. Basically, it's a mixture of these Indo-European newcomers who came in the early Bronze Age to Tarim Basin, plus whoever lived there before them. That's really what it is. And it's not Iranic. It's not an Iranic plus whoever lived there before them. Why? Because as you can see, there is no corded wear here. There is no corded wear plus. There is it's Yamne plus. It's not corded wear plus. And also there is no uh, there is no Neolithic here. He's not scoring in the Neolithic, which corded wear people and Sintashta would score a lot of. Uh, Sintashta scores like twenty percent Neolithic here. 
So this is one of those um, ways that you can really know that this individual is not a Indo-Iranian, this individual is Takarian. And with PanDNA LK10 ancient, let's look at the oracle here. It looks like this individual is scoring a lot of CHG, but you know it's very interesting. A lot of CHG, a lot of European hunter gatherer as well, and he's not scoring any ENF once again. And for the um, sort of the East Eurasian components, he's scoring seven percent and a half Beringian. He is scoring also six point seven percent Amerindian and a little bit of Siberian as well. So once again, you can see that these these people who lived in um, Tarim Basin before the Afanasivo got there, or Afanasivo descendants were most likely uh, would most likely score mostly Beringian, Siberian, and Amerindian. Although I don't know because because um, the thing is these uh, admixtures were in small uh, in very small quantity present in Yamnans as well. If you look at Yamne results with uh, upon DNA LK10 or MDL PK11, you will see a little bit of like Amerindian for sure. You will see a little bit of that for sure. Uh, I'm not sure about Siberian, and I'm not sure about uh, I'm not sure about Beringian, but you will see Amerindian there for sure because I remember I've done like pretty much every Yamne sample that there is. So let's see what the Oracle here, and with the Oracle, he's closest to Chuvash and Mardvins, followed by Pashtuns and Chechens, <laughs> and he's actually getting more of the mixture of Chuvash plus Kalash or Mardvin plus Kalash. Uh, kind of similar to what Yamnans would score with this calculator. Uh, a mixture of Northeast European and Pakistani. All right. Now let's see what traits and what phenotype this individual has. We're going to start with Nashakot. So as you can see for the phenotypes, the closest phenotypes to him are, you know, these kinds of really exotic looking people. Uh, number two is actually American native, which is very interesting. And number, f number three is Indian. I did update the phenotypes and I update them every couple of, I will be updating them every couple of days. Uh, you know, adding more stuff, maybe I will make a specific, uh, a specific calculator that will calculate um, what, what ancestry, what uh, ancestry specific phenotype it should display this, because so far it only looks at physical traits to determine your phenotype. It doesn't look at, at stuff like your ancestry, which I might need to add that there. Okay, and for uh, eye color likelihood distribution, it looks like this individual has brown or darkest brown eyes, very dark eye color. Uh, it's very decisive as well. There's pretty much no no likelihood of blue eyes or blue eyes with an amber center or green. For hair color, it looks like very decisively black hair. Definitely no other hair color besides that. For skin color, it looks like light brown skin. Very interesting. Uh, very much a... Very decisive for all of these traits. And for hair texture, it looks like this individual has straight or wavy hair, although curly hair is also sort of possible. For coloring related variants, it looks like no BH1, no BH2, or BH3. Somehow this individual has BH4. But okay, that, that is explained by this genotype, because this genotype is also predictive of BH1. Uh, and yeah, so he has two light color variants here. That explains how he has one light color variant in this variation. Uh, there was a dislinkage between these two variants. They're not particularly close to each other, so it's not a very uncommon dislinkage to see. All right. I mean, they are they are super close, actually. They are super close, but they are not as close to each other as, like, uh, for example, this and this even. So, or this and this. Like, these two, BH3 and BH2, are really, really close to each other, for example, in their location. Whereas... Uh, this federation and BH1, which I count as a part of BH1, and this federation, which I also count as a part of BH1, are relatively quite distant. All right. It looks like this individual has heterozygous genotype in this federation of ICIP, and he's got two light color variants in this federation of SLC 24A5. He's got Eurasian light skin variants here. Very cool. And let's see what else. No ginger variants anywhere in MC1R. Very interesting to see. Not predisposed, predisposed to being ginger. All right, let's see his polygenic risk scores now. And it looks like for the polygenic risk scores, he's got a above average score for schizophrenia, an above average score for type 2 diabetes, a below average score for Alzheimer's, a significantly below average score for multiple sclerosis. Really good to see so far. Nothing is concerning here. Uh, one risk variant for breast cancer out of six, which is really typical to see. Nothing interesting here. 10 for testicular cancer out of 14, which is really bad. Actually, we're going to have to explore that a little bit. But, you know... Out of 14 is not that bad because it means that not a lot of stuff, not a lot of relevant stuff was found in the file. 
for celiac disease, one out of eight. Okay, same story. Not a lot of relevant stuff was found in the file, and it's not that bad. For GSS, zero out of four. Once again, same story. Not a lot of relevant stuff was in the file, and it's also not that bad. For Crohn's disease, six out of 14, definitely very concerning. We're going to have to explore the result and see if that if he has any risk guidance in, in the important variations, in the three top most important variations that I look for. And for Reifenstein's, zero out of two. Once again, two. Um, variants were found, so it's really not a very good prediction. And for Parkinson's, zero out of four. Once again, not a lot of stuff, uh, not a lot of relevant stuff was found in the file. All right, we're gonna move on to the mental health results and monogenic traits in, in general. So it looks like this individual has heterozygous genotype in COMT, and he's got warrior genotype in MAOA. So overall, he's probably more warrior than warrior, uh, a little bit more warrior. So a little bit quicker breakdown of dopamine, more of the MAOA enzyme and intermediate amount of the COMT enzyme, uh, but more of the MAOA enzyme and both of these enzymes break down dopamine. Therefore, he's got a little bit less dopamine in the system, decrease in dopamine levels, advantage in stuff like uh, stress resiliency, but disadvantage in stuff like motivation and attention. It looks like this individual also has no derived no goal variance variants and DRG2 pro variation, pro variation, which means higher likelihood of schizophrenia, higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. It's kind of a good genotype to have if you're a warrior, in my opinion, because it's sort of you got less dopamine, but you got more dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. So it's it kind of cancels out a little bit in terms of the effect. I think uh, I, I, that's how I interpret it. But there is something bad, actually. No. He's got the A1 allele and TAC1. Okay, so he's got the A1 allele, which greatly reduces the number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and increases the likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD. So this uh, this would cancel out the uh, this would cancel out the effect of the no-go learner variance here in Pro 19 Pro not having any because this is like a because in in terms of the impact that these variations have on your like phenotype. This no-go learner profilence in Proveration has a slight, like a tiny little impact, whereas TAC1 has like a big, huge impact. So him having a, the ALE1 TAC1, it kind of really beats out. It really beats out his genotype here in profilence in Pro. So he definitely has less dopamine to receptor sites in the brain and increased likelihood of stuff like alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD. All right, and it looks like uh, we do not have a genotype for... Um, H5 HTCLPR, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. For mental health results, autism, we don't care. DDC, nothing was found. Uh, lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. All right. If you took an ancestry test, they would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. For OXTR and empathy gene, it looks like he's got two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy. All right. He's got this genotype, which is uh, associated with decreased OXTR expression. And once again, lack of empathy. All right, very interesting. So definitely a lot of sociopath variants in, in OXTR. Uh, for diabetes, nothing relevant was really found here. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. All right, good to see for Alzheimer's. Um, it looks like no really risk variants for, Alzheim for Alzheimer's in any of these variations. So that's good to see. For multiple sclerosis, it looks like he does not have uh, risk alleles in HLA, which is really good to see. Most of the stuff in HLA is really tightly linked to each other. So if you have risk alleles in one, you probably have risk alleles in all the other ones. If you don't have risk alleles in one, you probably don't have risk alleles in all the other ones. So you can you kind of know um, from looking at just one genotype, uh, you don't need to, you don't need to have the whole list. So in this case, we don't we don't have the whole list, but that's not a, that's not bad because we still have enough. Uh, to make an educated guess that this individual probably does not have any risk variance for it, for multiple sclerosis in HLA. Um, cardiovascular, we're going to skip. Myopia, we're going to skip. Uh, miscellaneous section, no micropenis, really good to see. Increased cranial size and 2% higher IQ. Better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. One fat gene variant in FTOs, RS99609, high roads of obesity and sleep apnea. Likely has photic sneeze reflex, which is a very European trait. And no variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A, and also no shallow shaped incisors in non East Asian and ancestry. His EDAR genotype is very European, very on East Asian, and he's also not an Asian flusher, and he's got lower odds of alcoholism and normal risk of esophageal cancer. All right. 
Uh, it looks like he's not a carrier of Alcutaneous Albinism type 1B mutation. He does not have any risk evidence for familiar Mediterranean fever. For MTHFR panel, his genotype is good. Um, normal hemocysteine hemo levels and lower odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. For cancer's panel, we remember he had a, he had a, a high risk score for testicular cancer. And it looks like actually all the three top most important variations for testicular cancer were indeed found in the file. So that's kind of bad. So he's got a pretty high score for testicular cancer. Uh, I'm not sure if testicular cancer rates have gone up due to technology um, because it might not even be relevant for somebody who lived in the Iron Age. I don't know. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these cancers seem to have sprung up recently, uh, maybe as a result of technological advancement. I'm not sure. Uh, for leukemia panel, it looks like he's got some genotypes which increase the risk of leukemia, but he's got these two genotypes which decrease the risk of leukemia. Good to see. For celiac disease panel, it looks like on this individual. Wow, okay. So he's got single HLA DQ8 haplotype and higher risk of celiac disease than average. And only around 1% of Europeans have higher risk than this individual. Very interesting to see. So he's got some uh, risk variants for celiac disease, actually. That's interesting. Uh, for androgen receptor gene AR panel, it looks like he's got the gene type, which is very typical. No androgen sensitivity. Unfortunately, the bold variation was not found in this file. Crohn's disease, nothing relevant uh, shows up here. So none of the three uh, most important variations were found in the file, unfortunately. Or fortunately, actually, because it means that the score is not as relevant. It's not as valid. And the score was pretty bad. For Canavan syndrome panel, it looks like there is zero risk variance for that. Really good to see. For HIV and AIDS panel, he's got one protective variant here which leads to 60% reduction in HIV viral load. Very good to see. He's a little bit protected from HIV. And for muscular dystrophy, dystrophy myopathies, it looks like not a lot of rel relevant stuff was found here, but there is no risk variance, so that's good to see. Um, for color blindness panel, it looks like here, zero risk variance in OPN1 LW out of zero. So these two, in these two genes, literally nothing relevant was found. Very unfortunate. And in OPN1 SW, there is one risk variant actually out of two. So that's kind of interesting. So maybe there is a little bit of a likelihood of uh, color blindness for this individual. For the FTO gene panel, it looks like there is... Um, okay. So here, this individual is actually homozygous for the fat gene variants. All right. So this individual is predisposed to obesity. And this gene type leads to higher odds of extreme obesity. So this individu individual might have been even a little bit overweight. Very cool to see. And for bio traits panel, it looks like there is this gene type, which leads to higher risk of male pattern baldness. Uh, this gene type, which leads to lower predisposition to anger. And this gene type, which leads to shorter telomere length and lifespan. Very interesting to see. Well, uh, that's pretty much all there is to know about this sample. Uh, you can download them in 23 and me format from link, which is in the description of the video. And of course, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Uh, goodbye.